Let's talk some super rugby. Justin Marshall joins us. Justin, welcome back from the the far north, mate. And here we go, our major domestic rugby competition, this part of the world, underway this weekend. Are you excited about it? Are you looking forward to it? Hey, look, I am, Marty. And, uh, yeah, it's nice to be back. Uh, I've, I've uh, really enjoyed my time over there. It was great to see the Crusaders there and see what interest um, that can generate. Uh, they sold out both stadiums, which was brilliant, um, and then equally took in some Six Nations rugby, which... There's a massive amount of interest now, and isn't there, particularly with the likes of Ireland and France being one and two in the world um, in recent years. So that that was great. But then now it's about refocusing, isn't it, and looking at um, our competition starting and what our season's going to play out like, and great to get excited about uh, Super Rugby and lots of changes, lots of personnel that are missing uh, and, a, and real interest into how it's going to play out this year. Yeah, I can't help but look at it. I don't know about you. Um, under the umbrella of Scott Robertson, Razor, the All Blacks, and also the changes there as well. I think that's that's something that sort of adds a huge dimension to this comp for, for New Zealanders anyway. Well, it does. You know, new All Black coach with a new mindset. Um, and, and as we've discussed, um, I'm very confident and hopeful that there's going to be a, a variation and a change in game plan, which will involve having certain players with a certain skill set having to come into the mix. So everyone, to a degree, starts um, fresh, really, and and including incumbent All Blacks as to not knowing what his mindset is going to be, where he wants to take the game uh, in the next four years to the next World Cup, where obviously we're very well aware the rest of the world has caught us up. Um, we, we've missed out on the last two World Cups, so we need to make significant progress to make sure uh, come Australia and the next Rugby World Cup that we're capable of winning it. And, um, you know, that, that means that there's got to be good infrastructure uh, in place and some really good results. So there's plenty for every player individually to play for. But equally, you know, when you're in a good side and you've got rhythm and you're in a good team um, and, and winning winning rugby is rugby that players get confidence in, uh, then that, that helps as well. So it'll be very, very interesting to see how all the teams compete this year with, like I said, all the personnel changes. Yeah, just before we get on to the round fixtures and so forth, I'm so glad you brought that up because you seem to be one of the very few that even wants to talk about this. Justin, we've lost 14 games in the last four years with the All Blacks and the year before that we got belted in the semi-final by England. That's a very clear message that we aren't the best team in the world, haven't been for a number of years. I know we got to the final and everything last year, of course, but, you know, 14 tests and you, you keep banging on about it. That that's not an acceptable all black record under any circumstances and I'm hoping first and foremost that we pull the handbrake up this year and go hey listen what, what we're about is we're about winning every single bloody game we play that's what mm -hmm. the All Blacks yeah. are about that's what you keep talking about that's what the legacy is isn't it let's go back to that absolutely I, I'm really glad you said it Marty as well because I feel very strongly about it now yes look I, I don't want to contradict myself but I've just mentioned all the way through to the next Rugby World Cup where we want to win it but in between that is vitally important historically for us to make sure we continue to create history, we continue to protect our history. And the fluctuations in the last four years since since uh, Ian Foster took control is unacceptable. And, and I think we've got to look at that. Yeah, look, there are moments that were great and there was success, but equally there were big major disappointments and a change in our history, losing to Argentina for the first time in our history, losing a test match to Argentina for the first time on our own soil. Um, losing to Ireland for the first time on our own soil, losing a Test Series side. But those things, those types of things are not acceptable. Getting beaten by South Africa by a record score. Now, that that's not the All Blacks, you know. And, and I think what we've got to realise is absolutely what you said, and I'm really glad that you, you put it out there because I feel strongly about it. Every Test match between now and the Rugby World Cup is vital. It's important that we go out there and we're focused on winning every single one, no matter what the cost and no matter... Um, how difficult the opposition is and if we can do that then that generates momentum to win big tournaments like the Rugby World Cup so yes my expectation levels are very high because I feel the last four years have been unacceptable um, albeit there's been some success but really when you think of what I've just said and the losses and the change in history that had always been there over you know nearly 100 years 
you know, that, there's been some hurt there, big time, and and everybody feels that. Yeah, no, I, I, I just don't want that to be the norm. That's look, I grew up, I'm you know, an, an, an older gent these days. I grew up when it was really important that the All Blacks won every game. That that is what the fear of the black jersey was. That when we came to play, mm. we dicked you and we beat you and we beat you again and we mm. beat you even when it, you you thought it, it didn't matter to us. We still won. All right. Chiefs Crusaders this weekend, it's a hell of a way to start. It's a repeat of the final as well. And one of the frustrating things about the Super Rugby comp, especially last year, is you look at most rounds and you think, oh, okay, that game's worth watching. Is that? And you try and cherry-pick games. They've got it right again, haven't they? Chiefs Crusaders, hell of a match. The caveat I'll put on that is the Crusaders, I don't want to say the poor Crusaders. Nobody feels empathy for the Crusaders, of course, if you are from that part of the world. But a hell of a lot of injuries. Let's start with Will Jordan. That's a real shock that this guy's now out for the comp. Well, it is because you're talking, you're not talking just the X Factor player in New Zealand rugby, you're talking world rugby X Factor player missing out of a squad um, for the entire Super Rugby campaign. Now, that is a devastating blow. Um, you know, equally off the back of losing Lee Halfpenny, probably for the entire tournament as well. Like, if, if anything, he would get back maybe for the final stages. But, you know, he's to a degree, he's world class player, his achievements and his record is impeccable, but yet he hasn't played Super Rugby in and out, and he won't have. By the time he gets back for finals, he'll be undercooked. So, yeah, a massive blow for the Crusaders. Puts huge pressure on someone like Shea Fihaki um, and puts massive strain on the outside backs who are already depleted. You lose Flying Anuku out of the mix um, as well as Jordan. Wow, there, there are two players that were absolutely devastating for the Crusaders and imperative to them, imperative to them from week to week. Even though to a degree, Marty, Will Jordan was missing for a large majority of the tournament last last year with his concussion problem. So, yeah, it's going to put some um, strain on them. Then you've got your general and Moanga not there anymore. So, yeah, lots for the Crusaders to think about. Um, veterans like Ryan Crotty back, a um, few others that have had a lot of rugby. So, yeah, massive interest in that game on Friday night. The Chiefs, conversely, boy, that back line looks absolutely mm, lethal. Mm, if, mm. Their front, if their front eight can give them good quick ball, um, to, to run onto with McKenzie, the architect. Um, there's some firepower there. They, they look a formidable squad. It's, a, it's going to be a big ask for the Crusaders to go to Hamilton um, and, and win that one. Justin Marshall, 81 Test veteran for the All Blacks, with us right throughout the Super Rugby season, the international season, of course, here on the platform. Are they the team to beat? I, I, just, I mean, you know, most people will answer that question and say, yeah, obviously they are. But, you know, that puts more pressure of a different kind on yep. the Chiefs because last year they did have that that home uh, finals right throughout, you know, quarter semis and then then that last game they just... And actually, to be fair, they didn't actually play that well right throughout the quarter semis or finals, said that they didn't play their best rugby. So that says to me that they just got to go up or find something else that they didn't have last year. I think they, they, they've they got some amazing players with fantastic strike ability, but yet they probably were a little immature to a degree on... The, the I guess the finals situations, you know, the, the game against the Reds, they could very um, easily yeah, have, have yeah. lost that as yeah. well. And, and um, you know, they, they didn't look as fluid as what they had when the pressure came on. And now with the expectations of them being uh, the side to beat, um, how will they handle it? You would think that that was something that they addressed and thought, right, when we go forward now, we have to make sure that we are a lot more composed and we don't lose our confidence and rhythm. All right, the Aussie teams, mate. Interesting that Phil War CEO, has challenged them. He says, uh, for the sake of Australian rugby, you've got to stand up to the New Zealand opponents. So, I mean, it's great rhetoric, it's great words and everything, but what are you expecting out of those Australian sides? Brumbies, again, I mean, I'm looking at it going, they look to me the only team that's capable of making the semifinals. Am I wrong? Yeah, probably you would think about the Brumbies as always being the danger side. Um, you know, they're, they're always very, very well drilled. They... They've got great history, and they tend to ha- they tend to have the the best resolve out of all the Australian teams. Um, obviously, a change of guard at, at the Reds with Brad Thorne no longer there. Um, yeah, it's hard to sort of look into their preseason form and gauge it really. But uh, you know, the force equally, they've got you know competitor like Nick White down there now. Um, what are they going to be like? Uh, they're always difficult at home. In retrospect, retrospect you know, I, I kind of look at it and hear what Phil War is saying, but I just wonder. You know, where, where has that emergence of real talented personnel um, come through from? Because I, I can't really see any massive differences in mm, the squads mm, and the players mm, that they've had in the mm. last couple of years. And, um, you know, when you look at that and you think of the dominance New Zealand teams have had over them, especially physically, 
Um, there's a, it's a huge mountain for them to climb, and it's massive ground to make up. Um, but, you know, they, they are tough, they are Aussies, and they, are, they can be resilient, but they're going to have to have a really good hard look at themselves and think about being much more ruthless, much more physical, if they're going to compete and, and get a team anywhere near the finals this year to compete against New Zealand sides. Last match of the round, Reds versus Waratahs. And again, I mean, when Super Rugby first started and you were playing, this was a hell of a match, mate. I mean, these two teams went at each other, hammer and tongs, but also they were both really dangerous opponents. I know that a lot of people say, hey, we need Australian rugby to be strong. I think let's concentrate on our rugby first and get our rugby back to where we want it to be, as we were talking about the All Blacks before. But I really like this fixture. I just like the rivalry of it. I suppose the origin helps as well, doesn't it? But these two provinces have never liked each other. There's something really cool about that. Yeah, yeah, there is. And, and you know, there, there's no doubt that it, it is basically New South Wales, Queensland, and there, there is rivalry that flows back to, to rugby league as well. But I guess it's just bragging rights as well. Yeah. Like at the yeah. end of the day, Why the hell not? you know, you've got Canberra and the Brumbies, you've got you've got the Force and you've got the Rebels, but the mainstay of Australian rugby has always been New South Wales and Queensland, dating all the way back um, even to Super Rugby, even though there was the inclusion of the Brumbies, but they were a new franchise. Queensland and New South Wales are the traditional two teams that used to go hard against each other way back before professionalism. So that's where it stems from. That's where the history comes from. We've spoken about it in terms of the All Blacks. They've got their own history, and it's always a really spicy encounter. I know, talking to the Aussie players, that they never want to lose that one, regardless of the blue or, or the or the maroon shirts. So it's it's a really fitting uh, finale to the to the weekend, and one to really look forward to, I think. But it'll also give us a gauge onto the depth of their squads. The to- the thing for me, Marty, is what type of rugby are Australia going to play after the type of rugby that they played at the Rugby World Cup? which simply did not work. No, and no. the exit in the, the round robin showed that. Have they made a mindset of a nation to go, righto, we need to compete. We can't get any worse. We need to now, as a nation, look at what made us strong in the times when Australian rugby was strong. What style did we play? What are our players suited to? Let's go out and not try to be like New Zealand, not try to be like France and Ireland. Let's be us and compete in that way. And, and I'm really interested to see if they can make some ground up there and come out and play that type of rugby that we know Australians can, which is skillful, fast, with some physicality and unpredictability about it. Super Rugby this weekend, people. A couple of quick questions. We'll let you go. Thanks so much as always, mate. Blues. What do we expect from the Blues? Are the Blues going to lose? Are they going to play and beat up on all the sides that they should beat up on and then fail at the final hurdle like they always do? Or is Vern Cotter with Tony Brown, which is a really interesting addition, Tony Brown, isn't it, on board? Are they going to have something different this year? Well, I think it's a stroke of genius to get Tony Brown in for a start off, you know, like obviously having a guy that's been through super rugby, he's been through obviously a team like the Highlanders where he turned a, like a, a reasonably, with his, this is respectfully um, intended, a reasonably average squad into real battlers and, and winning games, you know, on pure metal or with a good game plan and a good mindset. Now that's what the Blues need because sometimes they get their feet above the ground, don't they, when things are going mm, more well mm, and then they mm. have performances that fluctuate. So having him there, I think, is a stroke of genius. And let's think about it. It's just uh, briefly, you know, we've had massive personnel changes across all of the super teams, really, apart from the Chiefs, with coaching. New head coaches um, coming in, you know, Clark Dumity at the Highlanders is, is the only one that really, um, when you think of Clayton McMillan as well, that's been retained. So the rest of them have got new coaches with different mindsets. So, look, I, I'm... Oh, look, they're going to be dangerous, the Blues. If they can stop the roller coaster, uh, they've got the squad, they've got the back line, um, their preseason form's been pretty good. Uh, they've got good good halves. You know, Piero Feta now gets the opportunity along with Finley Christie there as well. So, yeah, really looking forward to seeing whether or not they can just back up their firepower with week-to-week performances. If they can, mate, they'll be there or thereabouts. They're as good as the Chiefs, I think. I feel. Right, mate, let's finish on this. Uh, I'm going to go the semi-finalists. Pick your semi-finalists because, I, I, you know, I, I don't want to pick the two finalists yet, but I'm going, I'm going, these are mine. I'm going to go to the Chiefs. I'm going to go the Highlanders as a surprise package. I think the Brumbies are going to be there or thereabouts. Crusaders, Hurricanes, maybe. Oh, I've gone to top bloody six. All right, and th- those are mine. All right. <laughs> yeah, because I think that there's going to be variances due to injuries and, and these squads, can they sustain them? But roll out your top four. Okay, well, first of all, I'm going to have to say that I've got to be convinced by the Crusaders. Now, it's not often those words have come out of my mouth in the last seven years, um, but like they've got some personnel missing and they've got some massive challenges. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to reluctantly say that they're going to be the fifth 
team that could possibly make the semi-finals, if that makes sense, considering you've picked six. The other ones, yeah, I think definitely the Blues will be there. The Chiefs will be there. Um, I think the Brumbies are probably, if they win their home games, have got the opportunity. Um, and then I, I think the Highlanders might sneak in as well. Um, but I wouldn't discount the Hurricanes. So basically, if you think about it, that's six as well. Um, I don't know what order they're going to be in, but um, I think the Crusaders, at the at, wor- at worst, are six. So uh, hopefully I'm proven wrong in that respect. Devlin. Yes! Yes! Can they do it? The Platform.